Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Gaming. So today we're going to be doing another controller review. We're going to be reviewing the PXN 9607B. Now, I know the name isn't one of its strong points, but beyond that, we're going to find out if it's worth the $35 it's sold for. Now, if you've been following my videos, the last few controller reviews I did, the controllers really disappointed me. On top, they were from manufacturers that I were expecting, you know, somewhat better products for. I was actually expecting decent controllers. Now, today, I actually ordered this controller and it's from a Chinese manufacturer, so I wasn't expecting much and it actually blew me away. So we're gonna look, we're gonna start by just doing a general overview of the controller, but we're gonna get into the review and you're gonna see that honestly, the PXN uh, I think might be the best value controller available for the Nintendo Switch out right now. So if we start with a quick overview of the box, it's what we expect from a Switch controller box. You have an image of the controller on the front, you have branding on the sides that are Pretty much the same and at the back you have a quick breakdown of what it's compatible with and what you have in the box however i just wanted to mention that when i got this box i was actually expecting one of those unbranded cheap chinese sort of knockoff boxes and this is a really fully branded you can see it was made to be put on store shelves which is much better than what i was expecting so next this is what we have in the box you have a small card here which is like a quick start guide with how to get the controller up and running really quickly you have actually a little pxn thank you for buying uh, this uh, controller and you have the full uh, guide in multi-language format so we'll put that aside because it's not what we're here to look at after that we have a usb cable and this was maybe the first tiny letdown point for the controller is that it charges with micro USB uh, not with USB type C. It's a letdown but at the same time a lot of other manufacturers do the same thing so it's not a you know huge point for me. However what I did find a little boring is that the, con the wire is really short it's like only three feet long which means that playing while it's plugged in is pretty much a no-no with this controller. Okay, now we get to the controller itself. And this is where I got really blown away. Because for a $35 Chinese controller, I was expecting a really feather -like controller, cheap plastic and whatnot. But what I got is actually a controller that is almost exactly based off of the Xbox One controller mold. The feel is really like an Xbox One controller. The finish on the plastic is actually pretty sturdy. I would say pretty much on par with most third-party manufacturers like Hori or Poweray, but not quite as good as first-party like uh, Microsoft or Nintendo's first-party controller. And on top of it, the buttons are really nice and responsive, and it has a nice heft to it. Uh, the controller isn't light, it's not too heavy either, it just really lets you know that you're holding a decent sturdy controller. And if we look at all the buttons individually, I really like the D-pad. The D-pad is nice, responsive, gives a lot of feedback. I've had no problem so far with it in gaming. But we'll get to that a little bit later. The thumbsticks are nice and responsive, not too tight, not too loose. The buttons, although I don't personally like clear finish on buttons, I prefer a matte finish. They're pretty much uh, nice, clicky and responsive. I, I really can't complain about them. Plus, minus, and home buttons, those are all fine, although we don't use them on a regular basis. The uh, L and R triggers are nice and clicky. The only pair of buttons I don't like are the ZL and ZR triggers because they've chosen to go with mushy triggers, uh, very similar, once again, to the Xbox One controllers. I prefer clicky triggers to these mushy triggers, but at the same time, uh, they're responsive, they do, they do the job just fine. It's just a personal liking to it. You have to know that they are really very mushy at the back. Now, if we talk about features for this controller, once again, blown away. Let me tell you, this controller has rumble. It's wireless. It has a rechargeable battery. On top of it, it even reads NFC and it has motion controls. So basically everything a pro controller can do this controller can do 
The only thing it lacks is that it cannot wake up the switch. So unfortunately it does not wake up the switch. However, it does have one additional function. It has a turbo functionality for the buttons. And uh, just to let you know, the rumble controls are not a haptic feedback like on the Nintendo first party controllers. They are rumble motors. So if you want that haptic feedback, this controller doesn't have it, but it does have rumble. And for the price it's at, I don't really think we can complain too much about that. Really quickly, we're just gonna go through how the two special functions of the controller work, which is the turbo function and also adjusting the uh, vibration level on the controller. So number one for the turbo function, it's very easy. You just hold down the turbo button and the button you want the turbo activated on, it'll activate the turbo. You can have the turbo activated for more than one button. So if I hold down turbo and X, now I have both X and Y that are on turbo. You can, to remove the turbo one button at a time, you just hold down turbo and you remove the button that you had it activated on. So now both Y and X are deactivated. And if you have multiple buttons activated and you don't remember which ones are activated, like here I activated all four, you can hold down turbo and minus and it'll deactivate the turbo function for all the buttons at once. Like you see here, they're only coming in one at a time. Secondly, you can actually act, you can actually control the level of vibration on the controller. So it has three different settings, low, medium, and high, and it has an off setting if you want to turn off the vibration at the controller level. Basically, you just hold all four back buttons, you press them in and hold them. Till the controller, like you see it vibrated and the button flashed for a few seconds. When it's the fourth button that flashes, that means the vibration is off. If you hold it again, the first button flashes, that's low. You do it again. You hit medium and then obviously you have high and then it cycles back to turning off the vibration function. So one last thing, if we take a quick look at the controller, if we flip it on its backside, unfortunately there are no programmable buttons at the back. I thought that perhaps there would have this function on the controller because they could have really outdone the Pro Controller in every which way. And unfortunately they did not include it on this controller. So if what you were looking for were programmable buttons, this controller does not come with any. Hey everyone, I hope you guys liked the quick overview. So just before we get to the scoring, I just want to remind you guys to not to forget to like and subscribe on the video, please. It really helps out a lot. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. It'll be a pleasure for me to answer you as soon as I can. By the way, if any of you are really interested in my review process and want more information, I have a video on my channel that I'll link above that explains exactly the review process that I put the controllers through. It's a lot more information on that because we'll be going over just, you know, the major points during the review. Now, the first category we look at is feel and build quality. And this controller is going to be getting a very solid 4 out of 5. I mean, the build quality isn't quite first party, but it's really on par with the top third party brands out there. And it's based on the Xbox One controller, which has an excellent feel in hand. It's one of the best first party controllers available on the market. So you can't really argue with the feel of this controller at all. And the fact that they didn't make it like featherweight light is awesome. Now, the second category we look at are the features and the aesthetics of the controller. Well, once again, this controller is going to be getting a very good score of 8 out of 10. Basically, it has all the major functions of the Pro Controller. Like I said earlier, it has NFC, it has rumble, it has motion controls, it has a, it's a wireless controller, and it has an integrated rechargeable battery. On top of it, you add turbo functionality, and aesthetics-wise, although it's not incredible, which is why it's not scoring an extra two points there, I am giving it an extra point for that. And it has that turbo functionality that even the Pro Controller does not have. However, like I said, I would have really liked to see those programmable buttons which could have pushed it even higher. Now we're getting to the real categories that everyone is most interested in, the gaming performance. And the first gaming type that I look at are 3D action games and FPS games. And in this section, the PXN controller scored a really awesome 9 out of 10. 
Honestly, this controller was made for these type of games. It has excellent response time. Honestly, the triggers feel really good. Like I said, the only thing I really would have liked was the ZL and ZR triggers to not be mushy, but at the same time, you can't blame them because some people do like that feeling out there. And honestly, it's molded after the Xbox One controller, and a lot of people would argue that that is the best available FPS controller on the market. So obviously, the PXN controller is going to be doing very well. The only reason it didn't wind up scoring a 10 out of 10 is the lack of those programmable rear buttons, and especially for a lot of FPS games, those are things that players really, really can get into. The second category we always look at are 2D platformers and side-scrollers and honestly in this category once again the PXN is going to be scoring a 9 out of 10. This controller actually has among my favorite D-pads available right now on a controller and that really took me by surprise. I was really really expecting a low quality D-pad on this controller but that's not what I got. And the fact that the triggers are mushy isn't so much a factor because a lot of side scroller platformers have minimal use for those buttons so the fact that i don't like those mushy buttons really didn't affect my gameplay in this section at all which is why it's scoring a really solid 9 out of 10 plus it has all the functionality of the rumble the motion controls even though these games sometimes don't support them they are there if you do want them so the third category we always look at are traditional 2D fighting games. So we're talking about our Street Fighters, our Dragon Ball Fighter Zs, all those type of games. Now in this category, this controller is going to still be scoring solidly at 8 out of 10, but it's not going to be getting as high as in the previous categories. Primarily the reason it's doing well is because of that awesome D-pad. However, at the same time, the mushy, the mushy trigger buttons can really, really be uh, somewhat of a pain when you're playing a fighting game because you're not quite sure that your inputs are always registering sometimes because they're so mushy, the triggers. So unfortunately, I've got to dock it a point there. And also it being a wireless controller, I'm an old school guy. When I'm playing a fighting game, even if it's only three to four frames of lag that it's adding, I really need my wired controllers to feel, you know, at full performance. And now we get to our final category, racing games. And once again, the controller is going to be scoring an awesome 9 out of 10. I mean, this controller responds excellent for racing games. The only reason it's been docked a point simply is because of the fact that it doesn't have haptic feedback, it has rumble motors, and these are games often that you do really get a better experience with that haptic feedback compared to rumble, so I am docking it a point in this category simply because there are better options out there, but at the same time, this is an excellent all-around controller, and I'm mentioning it once again, for the price, it's hard to argue with what you're getting. So this gives this controller a total score of 47 out of 55. I mean, that's amazing from a $35 Chinese knockoff controller that I bought that I was expecting to really actually hate this controller. Like, I, I bought it because a lot of people were talking about it out there, but I really wasn't expecting much. And I guarantee you guys, the NFC works. If you place your Amiibo right here, I guarantee you it will register no problem with this controller. And that's what actually took me the most by surprise because almost no, to my knowledge so far, there are no official third party brands that actually offer NFC compatibility. And this Chinese knockoff controller has done it on top of outdoing most third party contro controllers for all the other functions. I mean, what could you ask more? $35, this is almost half the price of a pro controller. So yes, you're not getting that haptic feedback, but at one point you have to ask yourself, how much is it worth it? And especially if you need to buy more than one controller, because for example, you play two or three people together at your house, this is actually a feasible option, a decent budget option to get two or three controllers, and everyone can have a really awesome, wireless, decent controller. Now, I'm not even sure that we really need a conclusion to this video, 
buy this controller. Honestly, you won't be disappointed. I'll be leaving uh, affiliate links down below in the video. So if you are interested in picking up a PXN controller, they're available on Amazon. I'll leave my affiliate links down below. It helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys anything extra. So please use them if you're interested. Uh, like I said before, don't forget to like and subscribe if you aren't already. Uh, leave any questions or comments you have down below as usual. Oh, and don't forget to activate that notification bell so you're warned every time I put out a new video. If you're already subscribed and you haven't activated it yet, you know, don't forget to hit that icon. As usual, I hope you guys really liked my video and I hope I'll see you guys in my next one.